We are officially in a buyer's market. If you have not yet noticed, homes are sitting on the market for much longer. The prices are being reduced on plenty of homes and there are no more competitive bidding situations. What this means for you as a seller is you have to think about how you can do things differently. And in this video, I have six secrets that you must know. Wait, six? No, it's, it's five, five. You know what, it is five. It's five secrets you must know when selling your home in the greater Toronto area in 2024. Sorry about that. What is up beautiful people? My name is Matt Moy. If this is your first time here, I am a local real estate agent serving the greater Toronto area, primarily based out of Brampton. And so if this is your first time here, what we do here is we share real estate videos that are going to help you either buy, sell or invest in the greater Toronto area. So if you have not yet done so, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel because I promise you, you will find value in these videos and hopefully it'll help you make some really good decisions when it comes to real estate. So be sure to stick around till the very end of this video. I have a free downloadable guide just for you that'll help you sell your home in under 28 days. Again, stick around till the very end of the video to get that download. Now in this video, what we're going to be talking about is five secrets that you have to know if you want to sell your home for top dollar in a short amount of time, especially in this buyer's market. Homes are sitting on the market for longer and longer. If you take a look at the year over year, uh, days on market for properties, it is much longer than it was a year two years ago because we are officially in a buyer's market. So without wasting any time, let's jump into the first secret, which is setting the right price. Have you ever wondered what happens if you go about listing your home too high? Very often you get homeowners who, and again, it's, it's a very biased way of thinking that your home is worth a lot more than it probably is. And so there's no fault to said homeowner. It's, it's a very normal way of thinking. But when you price your home too high, what happens is nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing happens. You get no showings, you get no offers on your property because the home is simply listed too high. There's a science and strategy, a critical strategy to pricing your home. If you believe that your home is worth a million dollars when in actual fact, in actual reality, it's worth closer to $800,000, then pricing your home at a million dollars is simply not going to do anything. The market dictates how much your house is worth. And you can see that with comparables in the area. And so when you sit down with a, an experienced realtor, they will highlight why, they will give you reasons why your home should be listed at a specific price. And not only will they give you those reasons, they will show you the proof so that you're not thinking or guessing at a number, but more so backing that number up by real data. Now, one practice that's very common in the industry is telling homeowners the number that they actually want to hear or completely agreeing with the number that they want to hear, what that a homeowner wants to hear, even though that number is completely off, just so they can secure that listing and then have that house sit on the market for a very long time. All right, so when it comes to setting the price, make sure the price is right and you have data to back that price up. Don't just agree to a number for the sake of agreeing without knowing why that house is being listed or your home is being listed at that price. Secret number two, prepping the home. Now, did you know that cleaning and prepping the home, and we'll get into what I mean by prepping the home shortly, but cleaning and prepping the home will increase the value of your home 
by three to five percent. Three to five percent, that's a lot of money we're talking here. If your home is worth a million dollars, increasing it by three percent is thirty thousand dollars. Five percent is fifty thousand dollars by simply prepping and cleaning the home. So what does that mean? Now, when it comes to cleaning the home, I highly recommend you do a deep clean, a deep cleaning of every nook and crevice throughout the entire house from wiping the blinds down, getting the carpet uh, professionally cleaned. So having a professional cleaning crew deep clean your home shows potential buyers that you value your home and ultimately increases the value of the home itself because it shows them that your home was properly taken care of. So what do I mean by prepping the home? Well, you have to go through each and every single room and do some cleaning. So what you wanna do here is remove all of your personal belongings. And when I say personal belongings, I'm speaking of things throughout your family room that shows that you live here, AKA portraits, pictures, get rid of all that. What you want to convey to potential buyers is them having the ability to see themselves living here, right? So any pictures of you might not convey that, but if you get rid of all those pictures, right? That might say, okay, you know what? I can see myself living here. I can visualize, me and my family living in this space. And so removing your personal portraits and pictures and, and accessories and whatnot, that needs to be done throughout the entire home, not only the family room. In addition to removing your personal items throughout the entire home, what you wanna do is declutter. Keep it simple, right? You don't wanna have a couch and then an extra couch over here and then an extra couch over there. Like, declutter. Get rid of anything that makes the space feel smaller, right? Ideally, you wanna make the space feel bigger. That's going to add overall value to your home. So get rid of grandma's chair that's in the corner that doesn't belong there. Get rid of whatever it is, get rid of it. Just declutter and make the space feel simple, clean and big. If you have like excess pillows or blankets that are laying around, get rid of them or put them in a place where they're nice and tidy. So next up in the home is the kitchen. You want to make sure you clear off all of the counters, make sure they are free of all the appliances and any personal belongings. You want to keep it nice, simple and clean. Next up, you want to tidy up the pantry. There's nothing like seeing an absolute disaster of a pantry. Clean it up, organize it, make it look pretty so that a homeowner doesn't get distracted. Now, I realize that a lot of these things are very minuscule, tiny little things that you might think to yourself, oh, I can't believe a homeowner would, or a buyer would think about something like this. Like, oh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Well, again, I'm, that three to 5% uh, increase in value will argue and say differently. So don't think that it doesn't make a difference because those little things throughout the entire house will make a difference, all right? So be sure to get those done. In all of the bedrooms, you want to reduce the uh, items in your closets by about 30%. Get rid of it. When it feels so stuffed and packed and it's absolutely full, and let's be honest, that's how the majority of our closets look. They're absolutely packed just for the purposes of showings and people visiting your home, get rid of about 30% of those items, make it look a lot less cluttered. If you have very bright linen sheets, bed covers, if you can, I would highly recommend you change those out to more neutral tones, uh, just like a white or a beige or whatever neutral tone you can get on your bed, that will help because it is a lot less pow right in your face, right? Um, I've stayed at uh, several Airbnbs, for example, or going to a hotel, and you will never find that. You will never find, uh, well, maybe in an Airbnb, but a hotel, let's use a hotel, for example. You won't go to a hotel and find bright red colored bed sheets. That's, that's just not gonna happen because it's not aesthetically pleasing. And so what you wanna do is change those out 
to make it more of a not so pow factor when somebody visits your home. In the bathroom, very much the same, declutter, get rid of whatever's on the countertops, put everything away. In the backyard, if you have children, tidy up all the toys, make sure that your lawn is well kept and so that uh, people can visualize, you know, again, it's just about conveying that your home is properly taken care of. Because if you show that your home, that you don't give, uh, uh, you don't give a darn about your home, then that goes a long way with homeowners thinking that mm, maybe this place is not very well maintained and maybe there's deeper issues that lie uh, behind the walls and stuff that you can't necessarily see. All right, continuing on the front entryway um, and just overall throughout the entire house, it's just about decluttering and making things look a lot more tidy than they actually are. So take your time in doing this, right? Let's not leave three to 5% on the table because you didn't feel like cleaning up the house. Now, if you are enjoying this video, again, I put out videos just like this each and every single week, all things related real estate in the greater Toronto area, then I encourage you to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit that little notification bell so that you get notified each and every single time I put out a new video just like this one. Secret number three, photography and videography. Now there's nothing worse than going online, seeing a new listing, and then going through the pictures only to realize that they were taken on somebody's iPhone 10. Hopefully your realtor will take the time to take professional photographs of your home. That goes a very long way when it comes to highlighting and showcasing your home, your most prized possession in the best light possible to potential buyers. As the old saying goes, you never get a second chance at making a first impression. And the reality is that's going to be the first impression for about 95% of the people who do come in to view your home. They would have seen it online first from either their mobile devices or from a computer and they're seeing these pictures. And ultimately you wanna get those pictures to come in and you know attract people to come visit your home as opposed to just passing on it. A tip that I would like to throw out there in addition to this is to opt out of the floor plans and the 3D renders of your entire home. And I say this because the whole goal of putting your house up on the internet or direct mail or whatever it is, is to attract as many qualified buyers as possible. Now, people can't necessarily fall in love with your home from the internet. They have to come in, see it and experience it. So you actually, in my opinion, would want to leave some element of mystery of, oh, I have to see this house in person so that you're able to get those people in the house. Now, if you give them absolutely all the details of the house, then it could immediately just disqualify them or say, ah, I don't like this or, oh, I don't like that, right? You want to get them in the house and have them fall in love with your home as opposed to giving them everything possibly um, that they could find or know about your house and making a decision from there. No. So that's why I choose not to do the floor plans or the 3D renders of all the floors in your home, right? So I opt out of those. So here are some shocking truths for you. Homes listed with professional photographs actually sell 32% faster than homes that don't have professional photos. Why would your realtor not invest in professional photos to list your home? Again, your most prized possession. Why would they not take the time and invest in making your home as attractive as it possibly could be? And as per a recent survey, which is another shocking truth here, 68% of consumers, of home buyers, will say that the professional photographs were what made them want to go visit a home. That's what attracted them, right? So with, with stats like that that are out there, and you can look this up, you can see why investing in taking professional photos is a no brainer. Secret number four, a systematic marketing plan. Now again, we are in a buyer's market. 
Now, too often what I see from realtors is they will list a property on the MLS, realtor.ca, and that's it. They let it sit there and let it do its thing, hoping that buyers are going to just flock at the property and uh, offers will just come through. It's not like that. We are in a completely different market. And so it's a completely different ballgame where we once saw where properties would have 10, 20 offers going in on a property to where now homes are sitting on the market for extended periods of time. So what does that mean if you want to get your house sold? What this means is realtors have to take a more proactive approach in selling a home. It can't just be listed and sit there for people to see. You have to go find buyers. So what I have set up is a four step marketing process. And so what I like to do is have a pre-launch, send out mailers, go to social media, and then host open houses. All right. That is the approach that I like to take when it comes to selling a home. So let's start with the pre-launch. The pre-launch is sending out an email blast, an internal list of buyers that are looking to move within the area. So this is a database that I personally have that I will send out and say, Hey, we have this property coming up on the market in the next 24 hours. And that'll go out to everyone, including a list of realtors in the area that have their own potential buyers that may be interested in a property such as this one, right? So reaching out to those realtors that will then reach out to their clients and say, Hey, we have a property coming up on the market, not yet on the MLS that we should look out for. Next up, we have mailers. Now I know most agents will tell you that this is a complete waste of time, but I highly disagree. And I highly disagree because data will tell me so. This is where we let uh, your neighbors know about your property that's coming up for sale. So this means sending out mailers in a systematic way that helps homeowners know what's going on. So a coming soon mailer will go out to say, Hey, your house is coming soon. Just listed. Again, your neighborhood knows that your house has just been listed. Hosting open houses, right? If I'm hosting an open house in your home, your neighbors best believe are going to know about it. Right. And then lastly, when your property is sold, all your neighbors are going to know as well that your property has just sold. And it's a very systematic way of doing things when you combine it with the next two marketing process steps that I'm going to share with you now. Next up, we have the no brainer social media. We have to promote your property on social media that goes across the board. So imagine your neighbors or someone in the area or people who are interested in your home get a mailer or an email about your home and then see a reel, a video reel about your property all within the same time frame. Not only that, they'll also get a Facebook ad about your property, right? There's so much that goes into social. They get a Facebook ad about your property that takes them where to your own personalized website that has any and everything they need to know about your property, your home. Last but not least, we have open houses. Now I am a strong believer in open houses. A lot of realtors actually don't like to do them where I enjoy doing open houses every single weekend, especially during the first couple of weeks of when your home is listed. That is absolutely crucial. Get the neighborhood in. It's not a matter of simply uh, putting out open houses, but you have to announce it and promote them ahead of time. And we use the other four processes of your marketing to help do just that in the form of postcards and in the form of social media. So with those two platforms, we can really get the word out and get more people into the open house. Something as simple as putting out balloons on your open house signs to attract more people into the home when you're hosting that open house. Things like that go a long way, again, in showcasing the home to potential buyers. Now, last but not least, let's jump into secret number five. Now, it's no secret. I am a real estate agent and I'm here to serve you and I'm here to deliver to you as much value as possible. And I hope you got that in this video. So secret number five is for you as a homeowner to hire a really good 
realtor. Now I'm not one to toot my own horn, but I would love the opportunity to simply earn your business. A simple phone call directly to me would mean the world to me and nothing is too big or nothing is too small. Give me a call. I would love to sit down and have a chat with you to see if we would be a good fit for working together. And so my contact details are down below in the description. Give me a ring and let's go from there. So there you have it guys. Those are the five secrets for selling your home in the greater Toronto area in 2024. So as mentioned at the beginning of this video, thank you for sticking around till the very end. What I want to do is give you access to my free guide to help you sell your home in under 28 days. You can go ahead and download that guide by commenting down below free guide. And I'll go ahead and send you that link so you can download the guide for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you, I implore you to please hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified each and every single time I put out new videos just like this one each and every single week. Again, my name is Matt Moy, your local real estate agent with eXp Realty, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.